So as a psychiatrist, you are recommending that men should have more sex. Yes, please, I do. More healthy, safe sex. Did you know that June is the month set aside to talk about men's health issues? Yes, it's the Men's Health Awareness Month. And indeed, men are notorious for not talking about themselves enough. Most of the men that come into my practice are forced to come by their female counterparts. And so we have an opportunity to educate men about why they need to seek help. We take it with both hands. So you're welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Kelvin. I'm your wellness consultant, which means your health is indeed my topmost priority. And in today's video, I have a guest. Yes, I'm hosting a very special person on today's session, especially psychiatrist, Dr. Albert Sedo here to discuss mental health awareness amongst men. Stick in this day. It's going to be fun. So let's dive right in. <laughs> and let me just put the first question out there. Are more men at risk of mental health disorders? But it's an honor to be on your show. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, before I even uh, go to the question, it's an opportunity. So I always have to create some awareness. So when we talk about mental health, what is it? All right. So mental health is a state of well-being where an individual knows um, what he or she can do or cannot do. The person should be able to withstand the normal daily stresses of life. The person should be able to learn, work, and live in harmony with everybody and ultimately contribute positively to the larger society. That's what mental health is about. Mental illness is anything that affects the way you think, feel, or behave. So that out of the way, people need to know that we are all striving for mental health. So mental health is not what you think it is. So mental health is a good thing. Okay, from the data, more women come down uh, reportedly with mental uh, health challenges than women. That is those who report to us. But in general, we are all at risk of developing mental health challenges. It's genetically, we are predisposed. It is what will precipitate the mental health challenges that would differ from one person to the other. But back to the question, more women likely report with mental health challenges than men. Okay. So then, I mean, compared to, again, compared to women, do men come more willingly to your consulting room than women do? No. Women mostly come willingly than men. Because among men, generally, going to the hospital, especially for issues of mental health challenges, may make them feel like they are weak. So more women report with mental health challenges than men in general. All right, so Doc, what do men do that put them particularly at risk of developing mental health disorders? It's a very good question because, see, <clears throat> it all starts from our upbringing, how we're brought up. So wrong, wrong socialization, you know, where the boy child is brought up to be tough, you know, at all costs. And as we, they say it in a local parlance, uh, that's in Ewe, my mother tongue, or men don't cry. So you are forced to not be allowed to voice out or express your emotions. So over the period, you will be developing some maladaptive coping strategies, which will predispose you to developing certain mental health challenges. You understand? So the wrong socialization is what is also not good. Another thing about men, aside the wrong socialization, is the risk of substance abuse. Most young men, you know, boys and young men, out of peer pressure, experiment with substances, drugs of like alcohol, Cannabis, that's marijuana or weed. Nicotine, that's cigarettes. Cocaine, heroin, and the rest. Mostly, it starts out of peer pressure. So, you have friends who may be doing, and they tell you, for you to feel like a man, you need to use this. You know, those of us who are using it, we are the real men. You know, they always, and you want to feel belonged. So, things like that put you at risk. And as men, we are trained, we are 
uh, socialized into you know being the head of the home the breadwinner the, the caretaker the provider so you are likely to take on lot of stress when it comes to work when it comes to providing for your family you are likely to take on a lot of stress and most often than not you may be in the background and not even be seen for all that you are doing and you may not and i repeat you may not be appreciated for all the hard work you may be doing because you just have to make sure you do what you have to do being the breadwinner so increased stress on you put you at a higher risk of developing mental health challenges you know sometimes some people feel like they are supermen they can provide for this solve this person's problem men naturally are like problem solvers so we end up solving everybody else's problem except ours most often than not so that is one of the things and more males are at risk of in, in engaging in risky behaviors you know over speeding um doing certain risky behaviors so getting involved in accidents and all those falls and all that so that also predisposes you when you get you get multiple head trauma and all that it increases or puts you at risk and through our socialization you become a little you may become a little overconfident whereby when you have a condition a medical or i mean physical illness or mental illness and you are even advised to take medication you might act as too known or all-knowing and that you know what you are doing and this and that and you might be a little overconfident arrogant and you know non-compliant or medications that alone puts you at risk of complications relapses and all that so these are some of the things that put men at risk top two or top three of, or among them wrong socialization increased risk of substance abuse and stress and mind you stress underlines almost all mental health challenges stress wow that's a lot of information <laughs> i like i like the last part especially <laughs> risky risky behaviors <laughs> but i have i have i have two follow up questions the first one is that you mentioned you mentioned the wrong socialization so then i want to find out does that mean that um african or ghanaian men have a higher risk of developing mental health disorders as compared to um say the european um, um male who may have had you know um, relatively better socialization in terms of how to handle their emotions you know and um, how to deal with it with stress okay it's neither here nor there the socialization to make men you know tough it's kind of a general rule so it's neither here nor there now what works in favor of the african is that some way somehow through our socialization we become a little more resilient and when you talk about mental health resilience plays a key role so we become we somehow more resilient mentally more and physically more resilient to pressures stresses of life issues of life compared to others who may not be going through such instances typical example is somebody who grows up in a, a deprived area and somebody who grows up in a privileged area if the two meet somewhere to go through something most likely and, and it's about resilience it's most likely going to go in favor of the one who grew up and survived in a deprived area you know because over the period you adapt you adapt you adapt you build certain muscles you know certain emotional muscles psychological muscles certain abilities to handle certain level of circles as humans mind you part of mental health as are defined is your ability to handle normal daily stresses which means if you have sex that stress is part of life and your ability to handle them the normal ones is what makes you have it's part of the things that make you have mental health all right so so the socialization has positive and then the negative for the wrong socialization making the male tough not being uh, emotionally expressive it kind of cuts across whether in the western world or in africa all right all right thank you very much and the second question now you are saying that we shouldn't be drinking alcohol and smoking marijuana and all those things i mean we'll have a special video later to talk about marijuana but alcohol i mean when when, when you speak to the guys when you drink alcohol you you feel good i mean you feel like you're, you're on top of the world so what are you telling me we shouldn't drink alcohol anymore okay so that's a, that's a good question you see alcohol the, the thing about alcohol is that um 
when you start taking alcohol very tricky about it is the amount you take now that makes you feel the way you feel after some time a week or two that same amount will not be able to give you that same feeling so you are likely to increase the dose and subsequently you are likely to increase the dose again that's what what, what is happening in the background is what we call tolerance your body now needs more to achieve the same effect now while that is happening your body is now going through changes to now begin to accept higher and higher doses and the higher and higher doses causes more damage to your system physically your liver your kidneys your brain your heart your manhood every aspect your 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 your, your digestive system every part of your your, your 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 health is affected by alcohol now on the other side there is something called addiction all right alcohol dependence now two different people may take alcohol that and at another time that one person may decide to continue or not to continue but one person may not be able to stop drinking the alcohol because he or she is genetically predisposed to becoming addicted to alcohol it's just 50 percent genetic predisposition right so that person now has a it's a double hit okay so the person has a genetic predisposition and now the environmental hit is where the person start taking alcohol then that precipitate the person's addiction and then dependence on the drug so the person start using begin to misuse abuse Tolerance sets in, now the person becomes dependent. Dependence means that the person's system has not gone through so many changes that the person needs the alcohol now to feel okay. Without the alcohol, the person doesn't feel okay. So initially, you start using the alcohol, and after some time, the alcohol starts use, continues to use you. So initially, you're in the driving seat. Now, alcohol is in the driving seat, and you are the passenger. So that is those are the risks when it comes to alcohol. That is why the advice is, avoid as much as possible I, I like that you said it affects your manhood because that's a campaign i've been on for a while to educate people on how alcohol yeah. actually does reduce performance in fact this has been research proven so it's not even hearsay they've actually done research to confirm that alcohol actually reduces male performance and since we are discussing men's month we have to stress on this point you know that the, the, that's alcohol uses yes. performance <laughs> but again and this is this yes, so, that, so there's a misconception so there's a misconception where a lot of aphrodisiacs are alcohol laden and they they, they they make it look like it's the alcohol that is doing anything alcohol with lower doses may excite you but after some time beyond a little maybe it's a cns depressant and once it's a cns depressant it will never boost your performance rather it will depress your performance you can ask those who are dependent on alcohol those who you call alcoholics you ask them if they are really really giant or they are doing well in the bedroom they will tell you maybe maybe we should ask their, their partners rather because they, they they will tell you that it's, it's working yeah i think so <laughs> yeah except except they give their partner some of the alcohol maybe that's the only way they will, they will be able to show their their, their prowess <laughs> <laughs> but now i have an interesting question now um research has shown right that um marriage in spite of all the i don't know there's been an, a trend a negative trend on over the internet about how marriage is not favorable to men among other things right but research has shown that married men live longer than unmarried men <laughs> i repeat research has shown that married men live longer than unmarried men this one we are not here to debate the, the research has been done now my question is does marriage also um, um okay let me let me make it general how does marriage affect a man's mental health good so the research like you since you're talking research let's talk research research also confirms that men who are married the marriage protects their mental health which means that they are at a lesser risk of mental health challenges compared to men who are not married just as men who are employed or have a, 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 a regular source or stream of income are at a lesser risk of developing mental health challenges compared to men who are unemployed or have no stream of income or no regular stream of income so the marriage is protective uh, in this case to go deeper into it it has to be 
a good marriage not one that is overly stressing the the, the man <laughs> and and you know and making him engage in other more adaptive coping strategies because there are men in marriages who are using certain more adaptive strategies like abusing substances to cope with the issues of the bad marriage that one becomes a risk but in general marriage is protective so since since we are we are we are talking in general what role does sex play in dealing with mental health of a man please this one i talk only about men <laughs> <laughs> so so sex 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 is a good therapy so sex therapy is a good one it helps uh, protect and um, ensure your mental health because during at, at the point of climax you know the um, certain chemicals are released dopamine is included other ones like oxytocin serotonin all these chemicals help you keep you in a good mood you understand that good feeling that satisfactory feeling that you feel it protects your mental health for example it is when your serotonin levels are low that we are worried about you having depression and anxiety you understand uh -huh. and when your dopamine levels are also deranged there you have other conditions as well and oxytocin kinds of help you bonding with your partner and all that now as humans we are social beings we are supposed to we survive in groups we survive with other people so once you have that you have more of that you have more of these nice good chemicals released it saves you protect your mental health and ensures it so sex therapy is a good one so as a psychiatrist you are recommending that men should have more sex yes please i do more healthy safe sex that's great because that i mean that leads into my my final question as men what can we do to improve our mental health the first one is to have sex obviously but then let's go on to the other 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 points <laughs> okay so just to rehash the point as men what can we do to you know ensure and protect our mental health the first one is to have more sex that is more safe healthy <laughs> sex like you said now other ones are that you need to be aware of mental health issues you need to know what mental health is and what you can do to ensure and protect it so awareness is very very key you need to know what constitutes mental health so that you, uh, you you work towards achieving it you need to know what constitutes mental illness so that when you're beginning to have certain symptoms you can quickly seek help and get it sorted out because there is help available on that so awareness is very key and as men like i said earlier we are more like providers you know breadwinners and all that but i said that we are still human you know so as men we need rest sleep we need to have good sleep good rest at least six hours of uninterrupted sleep you need it as men we you can't be working 24 7 and expect you to be in a good mental state no the other thing that we need to do is to have good social support systems it can be in different forms talking about do you have someone you can follow when you are in need of something somebody if you, if you just want to talk about something there's something heavily heavy on your heart you just want to talk something you just need somebody to talk to do you have that friend there's something called the body system where you have somebody you can always talk to about everything and the person will not judge you non-judgmental that's what we are lacking these days you don't know who to trust with your you know your delicate info your delicate and sensitive information how who you can be vulnerable to all right so we need to have good social support system people who make you feel belonged associations groups family organizations the workplace wherever you are the school environment good social support and of course most importantly of very key is financial security trust me social disadvantage in a form of poverty you know and other social disadvantage stuff gives predisposes you or put you at a higher risk of developing mental health challenges so financial security is key where the man has to have a regular and a good stream of income because 
our natural uh, pre, uh, tendency is to want to solve problems. How do you solve problems if you don't have the tools to? And money is a tool. So financial security is very, very key. That's why every man strives to work hard and smart and provide for himself, family, and other people. But you see, in the process of doing it, do not overdo it. You can't solve everyone's problem. You can't. Just to digress a little, even Jesus Christ, didn't, when he came to the world, he didn't save everybody. You understand? Uh -huh. So you can't do everything. You can't solve everybody. <laughs> you can't solve everybody's problem. You're not a superhuman being. So do what you can do and leave the rest to be taken care of by somebody else. And of course, there are things like be in good shape, exercise, regular exercise. It is advisable to at least 30 minutes of very active exercise at least three to four times a week good diet so exercise good diet very 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 key. so these are just a few things that and see we need to the rest is very key rest sleep good social support system financial security these are some of the few things that men should do aside having healthy uh dose of sex <laughs> yeah the sex part is very very important and i and i and actually like the part where you, you mentioned the exercise you see because exercise alone actually helps manage so many different things you know so you cannot uh, it cannot be emphasized how important it is for a man to be physically active very important once again dr albert thank you very much for spending this time with us i mean i just like to give you your final words what do you want to tell us about this whole um, concept of mental health awareness amongst men it's very key it's something that's very important but mostly not talked about you know i'm sure if not for you a lot of people may not even know that the month of june is put aside for men's mental health it's that important because most often than not men are neglected men issues of men it has you oh they'll take care of themselves they, they know what to do because you know we are supposed to know what to do because we are helping other people you understand but men need help and there is nothing wrong with seeking help so this the analogy i always give we all need help one way or the other as i'm talking to you i'm talking to you through a medium i need help through that medium i need internet services from a particular provider i need you know light from a particular provider you are listening you are watching this through a particular media we all need help one way or the other so men need to be made aware that there is nothing wrong with seeking help absolutely nothing wrong with seeking help just look or go to any uh, health facility in the country speak to the doctor about your issues and if there is a need for you to see a mental health professional you will be properly refer to see any of us you know the numbers are increasing now there is help available and just as an as an add-on there is a mental health hot um, line to free which is 0800 such a very simple number to memorize in case you are in any form of distress call this number and there'll be somebody at the other end you can speak to. So men, it's okay not to be okay. And it's okay to seek help because there is help available. Thank you very much for sharing with us, Dr. Albert. I'm super, super excited that you honored this invitation to join us on this uh, Wellness 360 with myself as we talk about men's mental health. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's we don't talk about it enough and men don't talk about themselves enough, you know, and so it's important when we have this opportunity, we, we share knowledge with men so that we can protect each other, be each other's keeper and not just um, in the drinking of alcohol, but <laughs> in the breaking of good bread. I mean, knowledge sharing is good bread. So let's all be aware of our mental health status so that we can, you know, hold each other up shoulder to shoulder. Now, Dr. Albert, like I said, is a specialist psychiatrist operating out of the, the premier uh, teaching hospital in Ghana, Kolobu Teaching Hospital, and he, he's also available to attend to private pay, um, clients in a very comfortable space um, somewhere in the capital city. And so um, he's also active on social media. So I'll leave his, his, his contact, I mean, his link in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and connect with him with all your mental health problems, whether you are male or female, he attends to everybody and he can definitely help you overcome some of these challenges. So once again, Dr. Albert, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. Hope to have you on board, like I said, where we can, where we can discuss 
marijuana very very important and very controversial subject but i'm sure i'm sure you are you are skilled to address it for us so thank you very much for honoring this invitation i'm very very excited for i mean to have hosted you <laughs> most welcome most welcome and thank you for having me and thanks to everyone listening and watching